Now, Paul, one way groups are solving some of these problems is not just by putting one satellite up at a frequency, it's by constellations of satellites at the same frequency. That's right. So for the early days of communication satellites and to the state, most direct broadcast yep. satellites, there'll be a small number of them, maybe one yeah. hovering over Europe to give direct broadcast TV to all of Europe. And these will be out at geostationary orbit. That's right. And this has major benefits because once you've installed your dish and it's pointing in the right direction, you can just leave it. That's right. You don't have to keep constantly move it. And that means complication is less, which means cost is less. That's right. But geostationary orbit's a long way away, mm. which means the signal has to be very powerful yes. to go up and go down. So and it means your beam spreads out a lot over that enormous distance. So your spacecraft is going to be bigger, more complicated, and need more power, which has its own... And you can't get very many space there because yes. they've only got a certain amount of geostationary orbit if they've all got to be nine degrees apart from the next one. That's right. And also, if you're trying to use it for internet, you can have a lot of latency. Yes. Because light goes pretty fast, but nonetheless, going 30,000 kilometers up plus 30,000 kilometers down gives you many milliseconds of latency on your internet connection. Which, when we're streaming a movie or you're streaming these lectures, will actually matter. Probably more for gamers. Yes. But... <laughs> so... What's now being thought of is instead of having one satellite up in a geostationary orbit, you might have a very large number, a constellation of satellites in a low Earth orbit. So the benefit here is by being lower, the signal can in theory be stronger. Yes, your, your dish doesn't have to send such a strong signal to pick up and the latency is less. That's right. The trouble is your spacecraft is not just going to sit in one place, it's going to be moving like crazy. Exactly. Which means you might only get signal for a few minutes until it disappears over the horizon. Again. And if you want constant connection, that means you need to have a lot flying in that same path so you don't have a gap or a lag. Yes. So this involves launching not one, not even tens or even hundreds, but literally thousands yeah. of spacecraft so that they're flying around in some complicated pattern so that there's always one over any given place that you want to signal. It's kind of the opposite, I guess, of, of mobile phones, right? You know, if you're driving in your car, your phone connects to one tower and then you move to the next tower. In this case, you're stationary, but the towers are flying are over. Yes, that's right. Yes, yeah, so this is basically a whole bunch of flying mobile phone towers, if yep. you like. Um, and here's 60 of these things about to be launched from a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. And this is the Starlink. Uh, which is the current yep. dominant player in this market. There are other constellations as That's well. Right. Uh, this is, I think there are, at the time of filming, about 8,000 of these things up there, but it's climbing fast. It's climbing fast, and I think in the first phase could be 15,000, hoping to even go to in the 30s of thousands. Yes, and these are quite small spacecraft. They're mass-produced. Yep. Um, they don't have to be very big and very complicated because they're in a low Earth orbit, so it's relatively easier for the signal to come up and down. That's right. And... There's the constellation they're all flying in, so bad luck getting Starlink if you're at the North or South Pole, but for most inhabited regions of the Earth, they've given the inclination so that it covers these things. That's right. And so you have these constant satellites flying after another, after another, after another, so you don't have that gap in leg. And from what people who are on Starlink are already getting, they're getting faster in some cases than what you can get on the ground. Yeah, and the way it would work is that you would send your signal from your antenna up to the nearest satellite that happens to be flying over, and it will then pass it around to other satellites, actually using lasers that we'll talk about in a second. Yep. And then eventually it'll pass it down to, at a ground station somewhere. That's right. So it goes up, around, comes down and back to you in this kind and of... And it can be limited by the ground stations. Yes. So they might have to build more ground stations to get enough link coming down. So in some regions of the world, starting is starting to be slow because so many people are using it and it's that link to the ground stations that's slowing them down. But that's no different than a mobile phone tower, right? They need to sometimes put up more towers because there's more people logging on to that service. Yes. And it needs an antenna to communicate with it. Yep. Uh, the antenna doesn't move. So it's a problem because, of course, the spacecraft is shooting past. Yep. But what we can now do is use what's called a phased array. Okay. So what this is is actually digitally steerable. The actual physical uh, bit of metal yeah, does not yeah. move. Yep. But there's a whole bunch of microscopic antennae embedded in this. And by applying complicated software to these things, it acts as a steerable beam. And this is often done actually in radio astronomy as well, right? Yes, so this is a technique pioneered by radio astronomers many <laughs> decades ago. But now it's used in military radars, the AESA military radars, yep. and it's now used for this. So it will know where a spacecraft is, and it will digitally form a beam pointing in that direction so it can get information to and from that particular satellite. And I guess with modern computing power, that ends up being cheaper than a bigger, more complicated moving dish. That's right. So this is Starlink phase one. Phase two, they plan to have bigger spacecraft, yep. more of them, 
and that will actually not even use it at all, but actually just be able to use something about the size of a mobile phone to communicate mm. with them. So there's a lot of these things going up. Uh, and so all the graphs of number of launches that we saw earlier, it's mostly being driven by these constellations of communication satellites. That's right. And as more companies come online, they each need their own network, right? Because otherwise the, inter the frequencies are interfering. So you can't just say, oh, well, you can just use SpaceX. It's their competitor. They need their own frequency to operate on. Yes. So the, the battle over frequencies is on again.